So today my postman was kind enough to deliver a package to me that contained my new 85mm Sony lens and it got me thinking of a topic of discussion that gets mentioned in forums and stuff like that which is when you buy camera equipment do you buy new, used or grey imports? Now I'll be honest, over the years I have bought from all three. Well firstly, what the hell are the differences? Well obviously buying new means you go to a retailer in the country that you live and you buy the item directly from them. It comes in an unopened box, never been used and it has a full manufacturer's warranty for 12 months, 2 years, 3 years, whatever the manufacturer is offering. Buying used obviously means that you purchase it from somebody else who has already bought that lens. So for example, all of the Canon gear that I sold Whoever's buying it is buying it secondhand from me because I've already pre-owned it. Now, depending on the circumstances, depending on the manufacturer, if the lens that you are buying used is still within the manufacturer's warranty period when you buy it and the person you're buying it from can give you their proof of purchase to show where they got it from and when they bought it, then for the rest of the warranty period that you own that item for, some manufacturers will still honor the warranty. So say for example, it's a manufacturer who offers a three year warranty. You buy the lens used from somebody else. They have the proof of purchase to say it was bought 18 months ago and they give you that proof of purchase. Some manufacturers will still say, right, well for that next 18 months, taking it up to the three year period from when the lens was first bought, because you still have the proof of purchase, we will honor that warranty. Then you have grey imports. Now, grey imports still are technically a brand new item. The items have still been made in exactly the same factory as if you'd bought them from a local retailer. The difference is that the grey import items were never intended to be sold in your region. So take Canon for example, okay? They make thousands of lenses every day. I think all of their factories are in Japan. There might be a couple somewhere around there, but all of their factories are in that sort of part of the world, but they sell them all over the globe. So all of the lenses get made in those factories. They then get shipped out and sold to whatever retailers want to buy them. So a retailer will purchase the items from Canon. Canon will ship those particular items to those retailers, and then those retailers will sell them in their area. Now every item, every camera lens, every camera body has a unique serial number so that the manufacturers know where they are sending each particular item to. Now whenever you send goods to another country there are generally customs, taxes, import charges, that sort of thing that need to be paid for and it is the job of the seller to pay them. So in the case of Canon they might sell lenses to a retailer here in the UK. So they will pay for the shipping costs to get the item to the UK. They will pay all the custom charges, all the VAT charges, everything like that to get the item into the country to the retailer. But obviously Canon are going to include all of those costs into the price that they're selling the item to the retailer for. The retailer is then going to mark up that price by whatever percentage they want to make a profit for and then they will sell it onto you for that inflated price. Generally, grey imports come from the Asian market, and I think that's because the import taxes and stuff over there are far lower than they are in the West. So retailers in Asia don't pay as much to begin with to get the items. But then for whatever reason, whether it's a, a lack of demand or the amount that they can charge people in that region for the item, they choose not to sell some of the items over there and instead offer them online with the option of shipping them over here. Then what should happen in theory is when they ship the item over to you, they will pay import taxes and everything else to go with it, which should then in theory make the item exactly the same price as if you bought it from a local retailer. But this is where grey imports get a little bit naughty because pretty much all grey import sellers either won't declare the item to customs or they will declare the item something completely different with a much smaller value so they don't pay anywhere near as much in import duties as they should do. Now from your perspective there's no kind of legality issues or anything like that about it because it's the responsibility of the seller from the person who's shipping the item to factor in import taxes and stuff like that. So it's their responsibility to pay for those. 
So buying grey import items are a lot cheaper than buying them from local retailers. The downside comes from the manufacturer's warranty or the lack of manufacturer's warranty. Because manufacturers obviously know using serial numbers where items are meant to have been sold. So say for example, you live in Europe and you've bought a grey import lens and suddenly it stops working. If you send it back to the manufacturer for repair, they'll look at the serial number and realize that it was actually made with the intention of being sold over in the Asian market. They'll turn around to you and say, it's not covered under their warranty, they won't fix it for you. At least they won't fix it free of charge, but you could obviously pay them for it. But most grey import sellers will offer you a seller's warranty, normally a 12 month warranty. What that means is if within the first 12 months of you purchasing the item, it suddenly stops working, they will sort it out for you, usually in one of two ways. The first way is that they will get you to send the item back over to them and they will send you a brand new replacement item. So you get a brand new item fresh in the box. The item that was broken is now suddenly back in the right territory so that they can send it back to the manufacturer under their warranty and have it fixed. Option number two, and I have actually had this before, I purchased a lens grey market a few years ago and the stabilizer unit suddenly developed a, an issue a couple of weeks after I purchased it. Now I contacted the seller, explained it to them, they asked me to ship the lens back over to them. Now I didn't want to do that because it was going to cost me about 50 or 60 pounds in shipping with insurance and everything else to get the lens back to Hong Kong. And then obviously you're in the nervous position of the seller's got your lens and your money, you could be left without nothing. Now, thankfully, the seller in that instance did agree. If I sent the item to an approved Canon repair center and got a estimate and a confirmation that it was a warranty fault and sent that over to them and they accepted it, they would reimburse me for the cost of the repair, which to be fair to them, they did. I had the item repaired. It worked really no different than if it had been a natural warranty fault. But obviously, you always run the risk that the seller might not be that honest. So buying brand new is the most expensive option, but it gives you the peace of mind of knowing that you have a full manufacturer's warranty if anything goes wrong. Buying great import is a cheaper way of getting a brand new item, but then obviously you run the risk that something could go wrong. You might find yourself in my position where you still get it fixed, it just takes a little bit longer. Obviously, you might find yourself in a position with an untrustworthy seller where they don't reimburse you for it and you end up out of pocket. But then in a lot of those instances, the repair bills are actually less than the money you've saved from buying at Grey Import in the first place. So you still end up saving money. But then if you're buying Grey Import through a big name retailer on the Asian market, then you've got that little bit of comfort of knowing that they've got a reputation to uphold. And if they suddenly try and shaft you, Websites like social media, Trustpilot, all those sorts of things, everybody these days, they don't go shopping with businesses until they've checked what they're like. So, you know, a lot of companies want to avoid having bad press if possible. And if you turn around and say, yeah, I bought this lens on a 12 month warranty and then you stiffed me for it, it's going to give them a very bad name, which most companies try to avoid. Then obviously there's the second hand option. Now, I've seen a lot of people who kind of go, oh, no, no, I'd never buy secondhand. I don't buy used lenses or don't buy used camera bodies because you never know what they're like. I only ever buy new. And be honest, I've got no issues with buying secondhand. In fact, in the switch over to Sony, I bought six lenses and the camera body. Now, the camera body was brand new because obviously it's only just been released. But in terms of the lenses, I've got the 28, the 55, the 85, the 16 to 35, the 70 to 200 and the 100 to 400 and only the 100 to 400 and the 85 I bought new the rest of them are all second hand the 100 to 400 I kind of had to buy new because nobody was selling them second hand the 85 I bought brand new because all of the auctions for these lenses that I was watching on eBay other auction sites are available but all the ones I saw getting sold second hand weren't that much cheaper than what I found this one for. So I kind of figured, well, for that little bit extra, it's worth paying to get brand new. But the rest of the lenses I bought secondhand, except you wouldn't actually know because there's pretty much no telltale signs on any of them at all. I mean, take the 16 to 35, for example. The body of this lens is absolutely pristine. 
The only signs that this isn't a new lens is a couple of scuff marks across the bottom of the lens hood. Well, big whoop. I could have done that five minutes after I'd bought it. There is obviously the possibility that buying secondhand, the seller might be unreputable, they might try and fob you off, they might send you the item and it's not as described. But with sites like eBay, with buyer protections and stuff like that, you're safe from stuff like that anyway. All the lenses that I've bought, there was plenty of pictures on there to show the condition of the lens, to show it was in good condition. As soon as they arrived, checked them myself, got them on a camera, made sure they worked, everything was fine. If there had been an issue, take it up with eBay, they will get it sorted or you will get your money back. Obviously, there is the potential with used, similar to grey imports, that you could buy it and a week later it could stop working. And then in that instance, you can't even send it back to the seller. But then same sort of thing, you know, you could ask the seller when you're looking at the item, do they have a proof of purchase to see if you can get the warranty transferred over. Or again, repair bills could be a lot cheaper than what you buy the item for. There is always the risk that something goes horrendously wrong and you wind up out of pocket, but realistically, that's quite unlikely in the greater scheme of things. I mean, at the end of the day, I sold all my Canon gear and replaced it with Sony gear. All the Canon gear I sold, I didn't sell it brand new, I sold it second hand. So at the end of the day, why worry about replacing your used gear with brand new gear that you're just then gonna use? As long as the item's in good condition, I have absolutely no concerns about buying secondhand. Generally also what I will try and do is, if I find items that are relatively close to me, I will go and collect the item from the person rather than trust a courier service. And then if it's not as described, I can just tell them to keep it and I've not lost anything. I don't have the hassle of going through refunds and all that sort of stuff. Now, this is just my personal findings. This is not some hard and fast rule. Not to say that what happened to me would happen to you. The Sony lenses that I bought weren't direct kind of like for likes of the Canon equivalents. I have done another video explaining it in more detail and I will leave a link up here if you want to check that out. Now, if I bought all the Sony lenses that I've gone for brand new, after selling all the Canon gear, I probably would have had to have put somewhere in the region of about 1,500, 2,000 pounds out of my own pocket to pay for it. But by replacing my used items with other used items, I think it's only cost me about 500 quid in total to make the switch from Canon to Sony. Now that's not a hard and fast rule that everyone's gonna get the same sort of thing. You know, I've downsized some of my kit. I've gone from 1.4 lenses down to like 1.8 F2 lenses. So obviously they're gonna be naturally cheaper anyway. But Sony lenses are naturally more expensive than the Canon anyway. So the two of them have kind of balanced each other out. But that's just my thoughts and experiences. I have bought new, I have bought used, I have bought grey imports in the past, but I've never had any major problems with any of them. But what about you? Have you got horror stories from buying grey imports or used lenses, or have you never tried it before? Leave your comments in the box down below. Thank you so much for stopping by, and hopefully I will see you in the next video.